Hello there, taxidermists and gent peeps. This is Neil Woodman coming to you with a video uh, about preparation and modification of a model in 3D Builder. <clears throat> so we are going to take a look at this little model that we have been sent from a friend of ours. Um, and they wanted this to be effectively <clears throat> merged into one item for printing. Um, so this is a 1100 scale Crusader tank, nice bit of detail on it. Um, now uh, if we take a quick look here, uh, we can see that the tracks are separate. Um, there's little peg holes in there and little holes in there. Um, so it's fairly, it's fairly well designed for um, printing in general. Um, there's probably a couple of things that I would change if I was being picky um, but we can go into those in a little bit um, but the original request was to merge it into one piece so that's that's one of the things that we will get out of this um, and then uh, we will take a look at a couple of other things as well so first things first we'll select it all and we'll rotate it into the printing orientation so it's it's flat basically uh, on the horizontal um, <clears throat> so we will turn these over and snap to one to 90 degrees there pull those out and we will snap these to 90 degrees that way. So interesting thing about the rotation feature, um, if you didn't know, um, if you hold your cursor outside the circle then it just rotates and rotates, if you hold it inside it will snap at 45 degree increments. So um, inside it will snap, outside it's free rotate. Uh, so that's, that's a handy thing to know there. Um, and the next thing is uh, this fuel tank here is separate. Now this is not a supportless model um, so with it not being a supportless model um, we, we could probably afford to just leave the fuel tank um, and we will attach that to the body. Um, if, if, this were, if we were going for a supportless model uh, with this then we would probably um, look at removing the fuel tank or keep leaving it removed so that um, you could uh, print that on the deck and use potentially less support. But, so we are going to join that, join that. Uh, I think they are all the separate parts of the body. All right, so we're going to go to edit and merge. Um, so they should now all be one single piece um, and we are going to settle this model onto the build plate so drop that down and drop that down and we'll drop that down so they should now all be consistently zero along the uh, on the build plate um, so that then leaves these turrets. Uh, now these turrets are interesting. Uh, if you've ever printed tanks, um, the guns are usually best printed horizontally uh, for strength. Um, now there is an option you could slice these down here. So for example on this one we could use um, edit and we could split that so snap to 90, pull it back to this point here, up until we see, so we can use the arrow keys to go back and forth, and so that'd be a good point there, uh, so we could split that uh, if we wanted to um, make that print 
upright. like that and settle that on the build plate uh, but we're not going to because uh, like I say those tend to print out better um, in the horizontal less chance of breaking it makes them stronger um, so these would be uh, blah, 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 object settle um, these would print on the build plate and they would use supports underneath them anyway so uh, this gun as well has been separated from that turret uh, so again we could object settle uh, that is it's not going to do it so control third, so cancel that that's a pain um, can be difficult to get these to sit at Z0 um, without settling. Hmm. That's, that's an interesting one, we can uh, come back to that. Now you can keep that as a separate file and Cura will place that onto the build plate for you um, flat. Uh, but it will be on that point. So um, there's a few different options here. Uh, I mean, personally, I would probably cut it along back, um, have that back as your flat, print the barrel at an angle, and put the uh, little spike in here uh, instead. So that points out, and the hole is on the gun turret. <coughs> Um, so, uh, one of the things that we can do actually to make sure that that's at zero, uh, so we go Z height, <coughs> put that at zero. So, when it measures anything in 3D Builder, it measures off of the center line. So, zero is halfway between the top and the bottom. So, then we want to find out what uh, the Z height, what the Z height is. Um, so the height of that should be Z, but it's not. So um, we got five zero uh, five six zero six five. So what we're going to do is just um, put that into there. So we'll take that, copy it, and then we'll put that in there, and we will divide it by two, and we'll get another number. And what we will do is put that into here, and that should be pretty darn close to zero um, because we've gone to several decimal places there. Um, and then you can get your main turret piece and you can drop that, settle that there and that would be on the base of that. So if you were setting this out so that you wanted a single file to print time after time without any real hassle, um, that is the way you would go about prepping your file. So that is now in a consistent order all on the build plate <clears throat> and you can just drop that file into your slicer, um, add supports, and away you go. Um, so, one of the other things that we can do, um, if we take a look in here, so you've got these holes, um, so say for example you wanted to tighten up the fit so that it was a push fit instead of um, a little bit loose might require some glue. Uh, what we are going to do here is uh, change the <coughs> change that dimension to 0.4 mil, and we change that one to 0.4 mil, and then we can take this little sphere, little circle, cylinder, come on. And 
we can place it here. Um, and once we have done that, we can scale down the height of this. Okay, so now we have that sat in there. <coughs> we'll go control C, control V, and we've got another one. And what we will do is put three of these around the edges. Um, so we've got one, two, and control C, control V, and we'll put a third one over here. And once we've done that, what you end up with is a little self-centering, um, couple of little uh, self-centering um, nubbins is what I'm going to call the technical term for that, and we will select them, object, settle. Um, if I was using CAD, I would um, settle. Um, I would take a little bit more time and round off the edges of those, and uh, I would also um, chamfer them into, into the edges, uh, so it would take more of a swoop uh, rather than uh, jump particularly and you can find more about that in our video about chamfers and bevels now if you repeated that for all of these holes so uh, for example um, we could go <coughs> like this like this and we group them uh, control C and control V and because that's in line with there we should be able to just bring these over here. Doesn't quite line up, so it's not exactly square to the planes. Uh, and we can drop that in there, uh, and we can also copy them over to there. Uh, we can also do the same in here. Add add. Uh, one on the bottom here and we put one there and one there because it's printing in this alignment so we don't want one on the top here otherwise it just cause a stringy mess um, and that would that would then be ready um, another thing that we can do so say we wanted to try and save su using supports on these bits of the tracks um, and also we can test how flat the base geometry of this is. Uh, we can use extrude down um, and we can pull that down to the bottom. And you can see there, even though we've settled it onto the build plate, we've got these bits which are sticking down just a little bit. And over this side, we've got like not very much contact. Now, these differences are very small and um, if you put them into your slicer it's not going to know the difference and you'll still get a good first layer um, but one of the things that we can do is extrude down from there and that should pull them down to the base plate uh, but say we wanted to bring these little nodules down to the base plate so that we uh, didn't have to use supports at all um, we could just move the plane to that point and we can extrude down um, and that you see there uh, has brought all of that down to the build plate so in actual fact you wouldn't need supports anymore on um, this track piece uh, which is pretty cool um, it's a very, that's a very simple trick to do and if you're having problems with um, some models that you've got off of Thingiverse or something like that and the base isn't flat, uh, then uh, the extrude down is a very helpful little tool. You see here how that base there isn't flat at all. Um, you've got these little bits here which are keeping that base from being properly flat on the build plate now that would cause an irregularity in your in your base 
Uh, so we are going to just, for the ease of printing, we will extrude that down. Um, and then that gives you a, a, a flat base. Um, it has created a little step on the front there. Uh, we could get that out uh, with a... So uh, we could get that out with a wedge. So we could insert a wedge and use that to shape it and cut that away. Um, or your other option for flattening that out is we go and uh, we just straight up insert a cube and we can object settle just to make sure it's at the same level and then we can pull that into shape like so so once you've done that drag that down and then it's just a case of getting it in the right place so do that So sometimes you get this, um, this weird thing happen with 3D Builder where the surfaces are pretty much the same um, but one will show through the other and then if I for example click onto there it will disappear. So um, <clears throat> we can then drag that to there and we'll get ourselves a nice flat base on there so we can select that and we can go edit and merge and now that's got a nice flat base on it <clears throat> so that that would be that would be pretty much prepped for going into cura and getting sliced and away you go that's not what we were here to do though so um the request for this model uh was that it all gets joined up um into a single piece um, so uh, we're going to scrap it scrap this um, and we'll open up uh, the parts again uh, and we'll show you that from the start as well uh, which again is very simple uh, so we will discard that and we'll open up all of these now it's very handy because uh, this must have been exported from the CAD package that it was designed in and none of the files have been reoriented so nothing has been set ready um, for you to just drop it into the build plate uh, and we'll go go over that as well in just a second so we've got all of these models selected Right, we've rotated them, we're going to merge them. So we'll see what result that gives us, is our first thing. Now I'm expecting that uh, because of the way they are designed, that the turrets would still say stay separate and potentially the tracks will as well. Um, this is because there it appears there's clearance holes and so um, let's have a look if we we've used merge uh, we've ungrouped it and turrets have stayed separate okay so uh, you could either leave them like that which might cause you some issues in printing um, now I don't know if this is going to be resin printed or FDM printed but uh, if it's FDM printed this is going to cause an absolute nightmare um, on your printer like that's that's not going to come out so in an ideal world you really um, you really do want to have these removable uh, but let's say let's say we did not right okay and we want to attach these turrets so the way we would do that to make them a single piece is to do this to do this and what we have is we're creating a new new spindle 
for it down the center, um, which is going to be, you can view that in X-ray, um, which gives us a look through the vehicle. Um, so we can see the pieces, right? They are. Um, so we want to make it slightly bigger than the pin that's already there. We'll fill up the space inside and what this will do is it will bridge the shells and bring them <coughs> together um, as one piece. So the same again with the small turret on the front. Um, so like so. Right, so we've, you see how we've got that there. So we've just created a bridge across those pieces. So now if we select everything, we go to edit, we go to merge. What we've got now is one piece and we can't ungroup it anymore. It's, it's a single, single piece model. Um, so we're going to object settle, uh, so it's on the build plate, um, and that will allow us to prepare it, um, and we will also go and not merge, we want extrude down. <coughs> Come on. Right, so we will extrude down, check the base of this, and we'll just make sure that what little contact it has on the bed is made more significant and regular. Um, make sure we get rid of any high and low spots just to ensure that it's got as good a base as possible um, for the breaking. So issues with this, if you were to print it as one piece, um, you can see with the fuel tank itself, uh, we've got, it will start off below the, the it's attached to the body. Uh, so that's, <coughs> that's potentially going to cause a problem. Um, these bits, uh, because it's got a point at the bottom, they could cause a problem starting on supports. Um, they're not a deal breaker, but they can affect the reliability of the print. Same here. Um, these won't be too bad because they're extending out from the main body, but it's things where you've got a point that gets started on support material where you end up with issues. Um, the biggest problems that you're going to see is trying to get supports under these guns and trying to get supports underneath these turrets um, to hold them up. Um, and also potentially under under here. Now you've got tree supports. Um, your biggest issue in this orientation is these downward pointing spikes here um, because you'll have to use like tree supports uh, with the amount of material and layers that's going to build up on there, uh, that could become unstable, uh, and that's where you get things like the head crashing into the print, which can cause you to get layer shifts uh, or to knock the model off the build plate. Um, but anyway, objective complete. Um, this is what we were asked, how do you do? Uh, so we've done that. That is now a single piece model. Um, and we can save that. 
um, and we will just pop that into downloads and we've got that and I will open up a new one and open that up again and once that is imported huh, it didn't need any fixing there you go uh, usually once you've done a lot of merging um, you will need to um, <clears throat> take the model reopen it uh, and it will often find errors and those errors you will need to run through 3d builders auto fix again uh, but this time it didn't need to uh, so that is good that is a good thing um, so now we have one merged model entirely we've checked the bottom um, for whether it's in contact with bed using extrude down um, <clears throat> and that is ready to go um, what were the other things that we were going to look at while we were here um, I think that was about it um, so we looked at separating out the parts ah yes uh, preparation of lots of files for printing um, if we go to here and we go to here um, so each of these files individually um, would need to be um, set up uh, and oriented for printing now these seem to have common dimension of centimeters being highlighted um, because I didn't make this model uh, I'm going to leave those as they are I haven't checked to see um, I haven't checked to see what the dimensions of this model are I'm just taking a look at it as I've as I've been sent it now I know that toolbox A and toolbox B from what we were doing before uh, and the whole pretty much need to go together anyway so if I was preparing this for printing um, I would do this um, now the file is whole one um, we would select all of these we would merge them because there'd be no real point in having them print out separately object settle um, and we would so it's settled on the build plate ready for print um, obviously we took a look at that before <clears throat> and um, in order for it to uh, settle properly we have these little bumps uh, we could put in the cube uh, scale it out until we've got a nice flat bottom on there um, but we're not going to do that on this one this is just an example so you would lay that down uh, settle it depending on how you wanted to treat the design you would flatten off the bottom by either using uh, extrude down uh, or the cube and we're just going to save that why can't that export probably because it's multiple parts so um, we will use um, what was it? Desktop Crusader Mark II, um, and we will save that out as STL. And it's going to be whole, whole. There we go. Uh, so save that out. Um, and what is the next thing? Uh, fuel tank. So the fuel tank centimeter again, keep the units common, <clears throat> and we would rotate that around a little bit further, and then object settle, and that'll find its own level. And we can, why didn't that export that? What is going on? Let's just take a quick. Ah. Okay, so here's another little thing that I have found in the past. Um, so you see here we've got capital STL. 
So when you export from CAD programs and stuff, uh, quite often it will do this capital STL. Now, if you have that in an STL file, um, the 3D Builder will not let you overwrite it. Um, so it's kind of like write protection on those old, old fangled floppy disk drives that you used to have, or VCRs, if you remember video cassettes, uh, you had the ability to write protect things. And that's, that seems to be what this does. So if you get that, you need to go and rename the extension with a lowercase STL. And that will fix that now. So we can reopen that. We can rotate it <clears throat> to there. And we can go object and we settle it. You see how it rolled until it was on the flat. And now we save it. And that is saved. So now that can just be dropped onto your build plate. Ready for printing. Tracks one. So again, we'll rotate it onto the flat um, object settle and save that so now that is on the flat and that is ready for the file to just be dropped on the build plate uh, you could extrude those down if you wanted to or if you wanted to keep that little bit of detail as it is you can do and use some supports to print it so that's good. Uh, tracks two, we will do exactly the same thing. And the reason we do this, so this is this is what we do um, as a company with all our files um, before we send them out. So um, <clears throat> this is what I call preparation for printing uh, and uh, or packaging up an STL pack. So uh, all the files come in. They're exported one way. We take a look at them um, depending on the requirements for printing um, and then uh, choose a print orientation uh, and then we set that orientation. Um, so interestingly, so if we, we, with this, so there's a few things like one, you do want to print the barrels horizontally because it gives them a greater strength. But at the bottom here, you have this little point. So if it was me, and this is me, uh, so I would do that. And the reason I would do that is that it's on the underside. Nobody's going to notice that tiny bit of detail. And what that will do is give you a flat surface um, for you to drop onto the build plate which will give you better adhesion. Now what we are not going to do with this is to settle it because if we remember it just tips forward because it works on gravity. So uh, we could set to zero on the uh, Z axis get the height and half the height and then set that number into there uh, but we don't actually need to because Cura is very clever and it will drop the bottom of the file onto the build plate every time so all we've got to do is line it up um, you only really need to worry about settling um, if you're putting multiple files uh, into a, multiple parts into a single file and you want to make sure that they're all on the flat. Um, you can also then use it for things like extrude down because if I used extrude down you'll see how because it's a long way off the ground that's how far it's going to extrude. It extrudes down to zero. So we're just going to save that and then we've got the hole, we've done that. MG turret, uh, again, uh, that is in probably the not favorable orientation. Uh, that will give you the best results. You're going to use support material, but that's fine. You could probably afford to cut off um, that spike a little bit, the, the nub in there. 
a little bit shorter. But it's no big deal. Um, <clears throat> same with this one. Uh, you will rotate it around like so, and then let it settle. Um, so you do that. So that's uh, three different ways of preparing the same file for printing. So um, we either prepare it all into a single file, uh, which you can then just drop that single file onto the build plate, uh, slice and go. Um, or you take each individual file and orientate them correctly for printing uh, and do any repairs individually that you want, uh, which might be handy if you have parts that uh, want supports, parts that don't want supports, etc. etc. Um, or you can join up all the individual files into a single model, orientate that and get that ready for printing. So either way you want to go about it, uh, that's three methods. Uh, we've used a few tools and uh, I hope that's been helpful. So um, go give it a go, go find a model, uh, go find a model that's got some errors in it um, and work out how to make the base flat. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Uh, there's plenty out there. Go find them. Uh, sort them out. It'll be fun. Honest. Have loads of fun. Anywho, uh, I hope that all helps. And uh, we'll be back with some more tutorials in the future. Um, drop us a note in the comments uh, if there's anything that you would like to see. And we will uh, see if we can make a video on it. Uh, and we'll catch you again soon. Okay, take care. Bye bye now. It has finished now. Bye.